Hello, everyone. This is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for April 29th, 2024. This is the time of the week where we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. My name is Tim, and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython. CircuitPython is a version of Python that is designed to run on tiny computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to help support Adafruit and CircuitPython, consider purchasing hardware from them at adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold the meeting in the CircuitPython dev text channel as well as the CircuitPython voice channel over on Discord. The meeting typically occurs on Mondays at 2 p.m. U.S. Eastern, 11 a.m. U.S. Pacific, except when that coincides with the U.S. holiday. Uh, there is a note stock that um, there is a excuse me in the note stock. There's a link that goes to calendars, uh, which you can either add to your calendar app or just view in your browser if you'd like. That will show you the uh, schedule of the upcoming meetings, including any potential changes uh, to the day or time uh, to the meeting. Um, there is a notes document that accompanies the meeting and recording. You can contribute to the document beforehand. The final notes document includes timestamps to go along with the video, so you can use that document to skip around and view the parts of the video that interest you most. The meeting tends to run about 30 to 60 minutes, and after each meeting, we will post a link to the next meeting's notes document to the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. Uh, checked, you can always uh, check the pinned messages there throughout the week to find the link to the current uh, week's meeting uh, document. This meeting is held in five parts. The first part is going to be community news. That one is a look at all things CircuitPython and Python on hardware in the community. It's a chosen set of items from the Python on hardware, uh, excuse me, Python uh, for microcontrollers newsletter. Um, the second part is the state of CircuitPython libraries in Blinka. That one is a quantitative overview of the entire project. It's a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate from our status updates. The third part and the first of our two round robins is the Hug Reports section. Hug Reports is an opportunity to highlight the good things that folks are doing. You can take, uh, take a moment to recognize awesome folks in our community and beyond. Um, the fourth part and the second of our two round robins is the status updates section. Status updates is an opportunity to report on what we've been up to. You can take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you'll be up to over the next week uh, until the next meeting. And then the fifth and final part of the meeting is in the weeds. In the weeds is an opportunity for more long form discussions. These discussions can come out of status updates or be uh, identified ahead of time as something uh, to discuss in the weeds. So uh, if you have an in the weeds topic, feel free to add that down at the uh, bottom of the notes document um, as soon as you think of it. And then once the time comes, we'll, uh, we'll go through those and discuss them. Um, just a quick reminder, we did have a few more folks join in, I heard. Uh, it looks like still mostly uh, folks that have been around before, but just a, a reminder to everyone, you do need the CircuitPythonistas role over on Discord if you want to actually speak. So if you uh, are planning to speak but don't have that role yet, please ask someone in the Discord there to give you that role so that you'll be able to. Uh, and with that, I will get the first timestamp and get us started on community news. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, there we are, yes. Uh, so community news for this week. Uh, we grabbed a couple of items from the weekly newsletter. Those items this week are, let me get the uh, first timestamp here again. Uh, first one was Espressif acquired a majority stake in M5 stack. Uh, Espressif Systems has announced its acquisition of a ma majority stake in M5 stack. M5 Stack is renowned for its innovative approach to hardware development and offers a modular open source platform that simplifies the creation of IoT and embedded systems solutions. There are uh, links here to the uh, M5 Stack uh, website as well as Espressive pages. So that was uh, cool to see this week. I've played with a few of the M5 Stack uh, pieces of hardware. They're pretty neat. Uh, next up, we have uh, Raspberry Pi debuts the Compute Module 4S uh, in 2 gigabyte, 4 gigabyte, and 8 gigabyte options. Uh, the new Compute Module 4S, 2, 4, and 8 gigabyte options are based on the Raspberry Pi 4 architecture. 
They are designed for industrial customers who are migrating from Compute Module 3 or Compute Module 3 Plus. And there are links here for that one over to uh, Raspberry Pi page and Hackster IO. Uh, next up is uh, Project of the Week for this week, which was a Pimeroni Inky Impression e-ink weather station. Uh, and there is a, a quick screen grab of that here, so I do encourage you to take a look uh, in the docs if you uh, didn't catch the newsletter uh, yet, because this is a really neat looking project. Um, this is a weather station that runs on Raspberry Pi Zero. It displays the weather forecast and sensor data. It retrieves weather data from openweathermap.org and stores and retrieves data from Adafruit.io. Uh, and there are links here to the GitHub for that project. Uh, it's a super cool looking little weather uh, dashboard. And then um, the uh, last news item for the week, which I uh, threw into the meeting here, was uh, about fake job interviews that target developers with a new Python uh, backdoor. There's a link here to Bleeping Computer if you're interested in this, but I saw this uh, news item pop up over the week and I figured it would be good to uh, mention to just shine a light on and keep it in people's mind. Uh, basically, the gist of that is some folks were uh, targeting developers by basically posing as potential employers, and then uh, if you would reach out to them to try to get a job, they would give you kind of a coding exercise to do, and uh, part of that coding exercise, they had you install some backdoored uh, library. So just be mindful, uh, everybody in this community, if you are looking for Python work, um, just make sure that you are... Uh, vetting what folks are sending you. Don't necessarily go installing stuff randomly just because uh, you've got somebody trying to offer you work. Uh, all of these items and more came from the Python on Microcontrollers weekly newsletter, which is a CircuitPython community-run newsletter that's emailed every Monday. The complete archives are available at adafruitdaily.com. It highlights the latest in Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython developments. To contribute your own news or projects, you can edit next week's draft on GitHub. Uh, you can submit a pull request there with the changes that you'd like to see, uh, or you could also email to cpnews at adafruit.com or tag a post with hashtag CircuitPython on Mastodon, Blue Sky, or X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, thanks, as always, to Anne for putting all of those great items together for us each week in the newsletter. Uh, so next up, we will get into the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. This is a uh, quantitative overview of the entire projects, uh, project. It gives us a chance to look at the health of the project separate from our status updates. We'll talk about the project overall. Uh, let's see, yep, sorry, lost my place there. Talk about the project overall and then separately discuss the core, the libraries, and Blinka. So first up, overall, uh, let's see here, get the timestamp for that. Uh, overall this week, we had 26 uh, pull requests merged by 13 authors. Uh, let's see, I did not go through and bold these ones just yet, so I'll try to do this on the fly here. But the names that stand out to me that are uh, newer or perhaps less frequent uh, contributors are user64, uh, Sean, the IT guy, um, uh, looks like maybe Neo, 59HF, with a couple of numbers sprinkled in there as well. Um, yeah, I think the rest of these names I've seen uh, at least a few times before. So uh, thanks to those folks, again, who might be newer uh, or less frequent contributors. Um, thanks as well, obviously, to all of our more frequent contributors or folks who have names that are just uh, more uh, recognizable to me today. Um, again, that was uh, 13 total authors this week. Uh, we had seven reviewers, um, so thank you to our reviewers, uh, mostly the usual folks, but just uh, wanted to say thanks uh, to them, Scott, uh, Dan, myself, Jeff, Retired Wizard, uh, Anik Data, and Bill88T. Uh, and that, let's see, uh, over the past week we had uh, overall 19 issues closed by six people, and then uh, 15 new issues opened up by 13 people. Uh, and next up, I will uh, pass it off to Scott, if you are available, to tell us about the core. Yeah, totally. Let me move my mic up here. Closer to my face. All right, uh, so numbers for the core. <clears throat> we had 10 pull requests merged from eight different authors. Uh, Braden Lane, Sean the IT guy, 
Bill 88T, Retired Wizard, N3059HF are all infrequent contributors, so thank you to those folks. We had four reviewers, and thanks to Bill 88T for reviewing as well. Uh, we had 22 open pull requests currently uh, when these stats are taken, which is a few under our 25 single page goal. Um, so that's been great. Uh, as always, a reminder, if a lot of these are for specific boards, so if you have those boards, um, figure out where those are and uh, what you can do to push them forward. That'd be super helpful. Uh, we have seven closed issues by two people and four open by four people, so we're net down. Uh, and generally not as many people involved, which is hopefully a sign that 9.0 is getting more stable. We have 682 open issues. You can go to github.com slash adafruit slash circuitpython slash issues to see all those. Uh, we track prioritization for Adafruit funded folks using the milestone system. Um, 9.0 has been uh, out for a while, so we have we have no open issues on 8.2x, 9.0x, or 9.1. 910, which is exciting. Um, however, we have 31 open issues in the 9xx bucket, so things we probably want to look at sooner rather than later. Um, we have one issue not assigned a milestone, so we'll have to do a little bit of triage if we haven't already. Uh, otherwise, uh, things are going good in Coreland. All right, thank you, Scott. Uh, next up is the libraries. So I will tell you about the libraries this week. We had, uh, or first let me um, set the stage, so to speak. So this section covers all of the uh, Adafruit libraries, which you can find listed on GitHub under names like Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, and then the name of whatever library it is. Um, across all of those libraries this week, we had uh, 16 pull requests merged by six authors. And uh, some of the names there... Uh, again, that were uh, newer or less frequent to me was user64 and then uh, Pink Cabbage and KB Sriram are some names that I think are um, I've seen before but less frequently. So thanks to them as well and our more uh, frequent contributors too. Uh, we did have six reviewers, um, so thank you to our reviewers. And uh, of the pull requests that were merged over the last week, the oldest one was 61 days uh, old and the newest uh, handful were just one day. That leaves us with 63 open pull requests. Uh, the oldest um, draft one is 620 days old and the newest one is one day. Uh, over the past seven days, there were seven, uh, excuse me, not seven, there were 11 issues closed by six people uh, and 10 new issues opened up by eight people. Uh, and that leaves us with a total of 743 open issues, and there are four of them currently that are labeled as good first issue, uh, which you can find over at circuitpython.org slash contributing, which is where you should head if you are interested in getting involved in CircuitPython uh, on the Python side of things. Over at that web uh, page, circuitpython.org slash contributing, you'll find a list of open PRs and open issues. Uh, if you're looking to contribute, it's a great place to start. You can go through the open PRs, uh, find something that you either have hardware for or an interest in. You can take a look over the PR, leave a comment uh, on GitHub letting us know that you took a look and what you found. Uh, and once you get comfortable with that, we can get you leveled up to leave official reviews if that's something that you're interested in over on GitHub. Uh, if you'd like to get started uh, actually coding, you can also click over to the issues tab on that page. You can see a list of open issues and again, find something that either you've got the hardware for or some particular interest in and uh, take a stab at actually submitting your own PR in order to uh, fix a bug or add a new feature or whatever that particular issue may be for. Um, we do have guides for contributing with Git and GitHub, so if you don't have experience with that, don't worry, we can point you to some good resources. Uh, we also have folks around all the time on Discord who are willing to help you uh, get started. So if you're having trouble, uh, but you want to contribute, please come talk to us on the Discord. We're happy to, uh, to help you out. Uh, we want everybody to be able to contribute no matter what kind of uh, level of experience and background you've got. Um, in terms of PyPI stats for the week across the libraries, we had, let's see, is that uh, 132,793 PyPI downloads across the 326 libraries. Uh, the top 10 list is here in the notes document. And the uh, list of updated libraries in the last seven days include connection manager, requests, and bus device this week. Uh, 
Next up, I will uh, sub in for Maker Melissa this week, and I'll read Blinka as well. Uh, let me get the header here. So uh, Blinka is... I can actually read. My internet's working at the moment. Yeah, perfect. Go for so. it. Okay. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for, um, for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers. This week we had zero pull requests merged. Um, there were six. There are currently six open pull requests amongst all the repositories. Um, there was one closed issue by one person and one open by one person, leaving a net of 92 open issues. There were 13,431 PyPI downloads in the last week, 10,428 PyWheels downloads in the last month, and we are at 133 ports. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. And next up will be the Hug Report section. Uh, let me get the timestamp in there. So Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. I'll start, then we'll go down the list alphabetically to give everyone a chance to participate. If you are text only or missing the meeting, then I'll read your notes when we get to them in the list. So I will take the first timestamp and get us started. Um, thank you uh, to Jeff for looking into some changes that were proposed for the WizNet 5K library last week, um, as well as another hug for uh, today, taking a look into and uh, submitting a fix for the CircuitPython.org uh, build actions. Um, a hug report for DJ Devin uh, for some new requests example that fetch excuse me, that fetches some wait times from a, uh, a Disney Rides API and displays that for you. Um, hug report for Justin for improving the files argument functionality from the uh, PR that I opened up in the request library. And uh, lastly, for me this week, thanks to JP for featuring the new CircUp example uh, on a CircuitPython Parsec video. That was really cool to see. Uh, next, we have some hug reports from Anecdata. Uh, Anecdata says, hug report for Justin for all of the connection manager work. Uh, two lines of user code now tames multiple sources and multiple uses of sockets, including SSL. Uh, next up is Dan. Hi. Oh, hi. Okay. Uh, thanks to Justin, Anecdata, Retired Wizard, DG73, and you, uh, Tim, for continued work on requests and connection manager and stuff. We have a really good thing going and cleaning up all these libraries. And I might have missed some other people who are working on this. Thank you all very much for that. OK. Yeah, thanks, Dan. Uh, next up is Deshipu, and after that is DJ Devon 3 Thanks, Deshipu. Uh, and then next is DJ Devon 3 and after that is Jeff. Hello, thank you. Uh, I have a hug to Snaky Maker Cat for helping others and the help with Circuit Python Discord channel this week. Uh, besides the trove of the usual names that I'm used to seeing, uh, they stuck out this week as being more than active, uh, at more active than usual, and they were fielding a, a wide variety of questions, which was impressive to see. Uh, a hug to Justin and Anic Data for double checking some logic for a PR review. Also, Justin, amazing work on the connection manager and just hammering out 25 PRs, request PRs with with statements. A uh, hug to Noe for a seven-year-old layer-by-layer video that teaches how to design with adaptive parametric features in Autodesk Fusion. I used that this week for the first time. It was very helpful. A hug to Foamy Guy for restructuring the examples bundle. It really helped save some time when I was jumping into a new into a new project. So it does do what it's actually designed to do now. So thank you very much. Uh, and a hug to Maker Melissa for her work on the RA8875 library, uh, the custom graphics library for one specific display driver that uses registers. Uh, that could not have been an easy project for you to, to tackle. Um, and if anybody doesn't know about the that specific driver library, it basically requires its own graphics implementation. Uh, so that's that's it. Thank you. Alrighty, thanks, DJ Devin. Uh, and uh, some folks are mentioning in the channel here uh, potentially having uh, trouble hearing Deshipu. So I just wanted to mention Deshipu did have a group hug for everyone. If anybody missed that. Um, and then uh, next up is Jeff, and after that will be Jerry. 
Hello, I want to start out with a group hug, and then I want to thank Justin for doing some work I suggested in an issue. And Anecdata, Justin, and some others, um, sorry, I didn't scroll back in that issue to uh, read all your names, uh, for all the testing on the SSL Anything pull request, that was really helpful in uh, letting me feel confident that it is an improvement. And that's what I got. All righty, thanks, Jeff. Uh, next up is Jerry, and after that will be Justin. Yeah, hi, uh, group hug for me. Thanks to everybody for being here. All right, thanks, Jerry. Uh, next up is Justin, and then afterwards is Maker Melissa. Whoops. Yeah, so I have a hug report for a bunch of people for a connection manager, uh, Dan, who actually took time over his weekend to talk to me um, to help wrap up some updates, um, Anic Data for constantly testing my updates, um, a Retired Wizard for uh, bringing up some ways to even make connection manager uh, better and um, allow devices with lower footprints to be able to use it better and things like that. And for you, Tim, for um, pushing me to make some tests better on the request library, which I really had fun building out. Nice. Yeah. Thank you, Justin. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa, and after that will be Scott. Let's see. I wanted to give a hug to um, Jeff for uh, updating the circuitpython.org dependencies and group hug to everyone else. All right. And next up and rounding out uh, hug reports is going to be Scott. Hello. Uh, quick thank, uh, thank you to Toddbot for testing the Max 31, 3421 support on ESB and discovering I hadn't actually turned it on. All right. Thank you, Scott. And that is it for Hug Reports this week. So next up is Status Updates. Status Updates is our time to tell folks what we're up to individually. I'll start, then we'll go through the list alphabetically, just like we did for Hug Reports. Uh, when I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. Uh, this is also an opportunity to provide tips and tricks that are relevant to what folks are working on. If a discussion does become too long for Status Updates, we can always uh, bump it down to In the Weeds. I will take the first timestamp and get us started, and then uh, following me is Dan. But uh, starting us off here, uh, for me this week, I did, uh, over the past week, I should say, I did lots of reviews and testing uh, in WizNet and requests libraries. Um, over the weekend, I worked on updating the, uh, the Tic-Tac-Toe conference badge app that I started a little while back. Uh, to uh, implement the ability to store statistics about how many times each player has won um, both um, in the current session as well as the all-time score, which is stored in NVM so that it can persist. Um, I started this morning to trace through some of the actions logs to try to figure out what was going on with circuitpython.org uh, building. Um, kind of jumping uh, back to last week, I built a, a TUI, a terminal user interface, I think it is, uh, app using a library called Textual. Um, this provides a more visual way to load library examples. Um, it's built on top of the new circup example command, um, but it just gives you a visual kind of like tree look that you can search and click through instead of um, just a command line thing, uh, although it runs in the terminal, so it is still kind of just a command line thing too. Uh, this week, I'm going to look into caching the data that uh, circup example and this tool are using in order to render their list of examples. Uh, if we cache that into a JSON file and attach it to a, a release asset or something like that somewhere, we can have um, other front ends be able to just grab this list of examples and be able to present them to users to install in um, other various different ways, which I think will be really nice. Um, I started writing up a, mes uh, a message uh, for the good first issue post. We talked about a little bit in the weeds last week. Um, this will be for making display.io based uh, sensor examples. I submitted one example PR uh, on one sensor library just to have uh, a thing to link to, link to, to point at uh, as an example of what this can look like. Um, and then uh, I'm hoping to finish up the message and start trying to figure out how to loop through those and post those later on this afternoon. Uh, and last thing I've got for this week is I started a, on a playground page that shows how to use a PostgreSQL database along with an add-on called PostgreSQL with a T on the end 
um, to build a backend server that can store data sent to it from microcontrollers uh, with HTTP requests, or obviously could store data sent from other sources, but this is what the use case I have in mind is. Uh, and then I built some very, very, very basic uh, front end pages that fetch data back out of that system and then draw it onto some graphs. Uh, and I have a couple of more ideas on that, and I hope to finish up that playground, and I'll share the uh, link to that once I have it done. Um, next up is Dan. That's better. Okay. Um, so uh, I have a PR to make it possible to do uh, socket connect timeouts that you specify instead of the default one on Espressif. So instead of always being 30 seconds, you can make it shorter or longer. Um, that PR just needs to be reviewed. Uh, it's already possible to do that on the Pico W. Um, Justin noticed. I thought there was some problem with the request that was doubling the size of the timeout, but it has to do with retries and connection manager. So that's a little confusing, but we'll try to work that out. Um, I updated my home development machine, or the one I use all the time, to Ubuntu 2404 over the weekend uh, deliberately so I could start working out what the issues are, uh, getting CircuitPython builds to work on a vanilla uh, clean install. It was a, I did a clean install. And um, we were debugging some of those in the chat earlier, and I'm, I'm working on that right now. The main thing is that you will need a VN or virtual env to install things with pip in Ubuntu 24.04. We've already seen this on the Bookworm version on Raspberry Pi. So I'll add stuff to the Building Circuit Python guide to uh, lead people through this stuff as I figure out the best way to do it. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dan. Uh, next up is Deshipu, and then after that is DJ Devon 3. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yep. I can hear you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, so I got a workshop accepted for the EuroPython conference. We will be using the PewPew devices, which run liquid Python to teach Python to the beginners on that conference. So that, that will be a test of the new version of the UPUs for me, so I'm excited about that. And uh, I'm going to PyCon US next month, oh, this month, oh, next month, that's uh, in May. So I was uh, wondering if anybody else accepts. Thank you. All right, thank you, Deshipu. Next up is DJ Devon 3, and after that is Jeff. Thank you. This week I designed and ordered another ST7796S display adapter PCB that will allow me to interchange a, all three, a Feather or a Cutie Pie or a Pi Pico on the back of one display adapter board instead of on separate boards because I got tired of fumbling through my desk looking for the specific board to go with a specific board. Uh, I started designing a CircuitPython irrigation controller based on the Adafruit Power Relay Featherwing. It uses 24-volt AC to turn on irrigation solenoids with a 3-volt uh, trigger. And if anyone doesn't know, irrigation controllers are all 24-volt AC. So um, I reviewed a PR relating to the AT, I don't know, just ATEC, CryptoChick, during the review, I discovered there's an issue with how the library is checking the minimum length of certificate issuer fields. It's not a script breaking error, but it could potentially allow someone to fill in all fields with blank entries and then lock the chip with almost no CSR issuer data, because that's what locking the chip is supposed to do, is you're supposed to fill in your CSR data, and then you present the chip. Um, anyway. Um, because, yeah, so once it's locked, you can never edit it again. So it's a good idea to have all those fields um, filled in. Then I started working on a project uh, a couple days ago with the RA8875 7-inch Touch TFT from Adafruit and the RA8875 driver board. It's a large 7-inch. Um, I submitted a PR that speeds up the BMP simple test that comes with it, uh, loading time from 17 seconds to 4 seconds, so about quadrupled the uh, how fast it loads a BMP now. Um, all BMPs with this library will now load faster. Unfortunately, there's no display I.O. support for this. 
So I'm working on improving some very basic built-in graphics stuff that Melissa laid the groundwork for years ago. Um, and it's a great display. It just it would be better if it had display I/O. It just doesn't. And uh, so I'm kind of tranching through there, getting BMPs and trying to get JPEGs and other stuff to to work with it because it's a great little display. And that's all I got. All right. Thank you, DJ Devin. Uh, next up is Jeff, and after that will be Jerry. Hi again. So um, as we've talked about some already through other people's hug reports, the SSL Anything branch is merged, so I'm really excited about that. And uh, next up, I'm returning to something that I worked on a couple of weeks ago and felt stuck. It's time to dig into it again, and that is uh, audio playback on the ESP32 S3. I've got a little setup here with a with a feather and an I2S amplifier and something as simple as just playing a sine wave from a, 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 a raw sample is kind of giving glitchy playback. And so what I'm trying to do is um, toggle GPIO pin so that I know where the code is spending all its time and hopefully that will lead me to an understanding of what's going on and a bug fix. And that's what I am up to. All right. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, next up is Jerry, and after that will be Justin. Yeah, hi. Uh, not much to report this week. I, I did receive a couple of the um, OV5640 Pico Bell camera boards. Oops, there's a cat. Um, and so now I'm, I'm just actually playing with them right now, trying to see if I can adapt the, uh, the breakout board um, and RP2040 examples to, to work on them. Um, and in particular, I want to see if I can get the autofocus to work on them, since uh, I'm not aware that that's been put into the, uh, into the libraries for this yet, since uh, these don't use the ESP camera libraries like the, uh, the Memento does. Uh, so unless I've missed it and somebody else has already done all this stuff, uh, I haven't seen any examples of using that library with, with these boards yet. So just poking around. Nice, thank you, Jerry. Yeah, that's uh, that is my understanding as well. I've never seen any autofocus on the um, on the OV fifty six one. So uh, next up will be uh, Justin, and following that is Maker Melissa. Yeah, so it's been a lot of last week uh, just working through requests and connection manager updates, um, trying to get things a lot closer to uh, C Python. Um, and specifically at this point, I'm at a point where I've opened up um, pull requests, moving both the ESP32 SPI and the WISNET 5K from kind of using a singleton um, kind of socket kind of pool um, to more of an actual socket pool. Um, and there's a link here if you haven't seen um, Anecdata's 7X Radio Monster with um, three different WISNETs, um, three different ESP32 SPIs, and um, I think an S3 as the main base. Um, it's pretty cool, but all of them can connect on their own IPs and whatnot. I don't know who would do this in the real world, but it's been really fun to kind of build this out and get things a little bit more on par. All right. Thank you, Justin. Uh, next up is Maker Melissa. Maker Melissa is uh, text only in here. I'll read. Uh, let's see here. Maker Melissa says, last week was short because I was out sick for a couple of days uh, and uh, finishing up on a few on the last few learn guides. And uh, rounding out the section is Scott. Hello. Sorry. <laughs> Didn't realize there was, wasn't more people. Uh, I'm out next week on a road trip with my dad, which I'm super excited about. Uh, thanks to Foamy Guy for doing deep dive next week. Um, I've enabled Max 3421 support on pretty much all ESPs. I thought I had, um, but Todd found I hadn't. Um, I'd only done it on one board that I'd like tested it with. Um, I needed to update TinySB to get to it to compile on the CX chips series of chips. I <laughs> needed to tweak CircuitPython to also handle uh, builds that have TinyUSB only for host. Um, because the C series of chips do not have device, they only have host. Um, I did start working on the ESP BLE GAT server support. It's sketched out, it compiles, but I haven't tested it. I'm going to try to get started on that today to, to really focus on it this week. Um, the Renode PR is really close. I just, uh, the max changes I did uh, conflicted with it. 
Um, so I needed some updates and I just pushed those to the PR now as well. Um, so hopefully that'll get in. And there's always already been, Jeff mentioned that he'd like to see our, us run tests in the Renode simulator, so that'd be cool. Um, but for now, uh, it's just if you you got to use it from from your local box. But that's uh, that's my update. My goal is to get the GAT server stuff at least out for review by the end of the week. All right, thank you, Scott. And that is it for status updates. So the fifth and final section for the meeting is in the weeds. Uh, in the Weeds is an opportunity for long-form discussions that either come out of status updates or that folks have identified ahead of time. If you've got any In the Weeds topics, please make sure they get added at the bottom of the document. Um, we do have uh, one, so we'll start. I'll uh, hand the baton off to Justin if you want to tell us about your topic. Yeah, and I apologize if this has been talked about in the past. Um, as I've been working through different libraries, mostly in the connection area, um, and I've asked questions like, oh, I've found this thing here. Should I update it here or not? Um, I've gotten a lot of comments about, oh, that's depreciated or been replaced or whatnot. But then I basically noticed that we don't have anything internal. Um, we're not updating um, libraries in GitHub or we don't have anything like in the bundles that mark that they are um, depreciated. And so just kind of wanted to bring up on a high level if this is something that makes sense. Um, and then I just some high level things um, that I had that came to mind for me was on the bundle doc page, maybe towards the bottom, having something that lists appreciated ones so people could still find them. Um, there is a GitHub. So in the badges, there's a specific no maintenance intended badge that we could throw on there. Um, you know, actually removing them from the bundle itself so they don't just keep downloading. So if someone wants them for legacy purposes, they'd have to go out and find them. Um, and then updating the readmes to flag that they're depreciated um, and why. For example, the WSGI one has just been replaced with the HTTP server at this point, as far as I can tell. Um, and so getting people to where they can continue that work or whatnot. So um, happy to work through this and like add things. Don't know if you guys have talked about depreciating things specifically in the past or what your guys' thoughts are. So. Open up for comments from there. It so all sounds good. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, it, it sounds reasonable to me. Um, even if we remove things from the bundle, we do have this policy of like, here's the last bundle that worked on this version. And that kind of like gives people a way to get it if they need it for older stuff. Um, yeah, it seems reasonable to me. Yeah, I, don't, I, I think we could just remove the library from the bundle because. A lot of these say they're deprecated in the GitHub repos. So um, like I think ESPAT control is, yeah. it might be marked as archived. I'm not sure. I mean, we have, if we're not going to do any more work on these, then we, we sometimes archive them so we don't get new issues. At the very least, you put something in the readme for that. So I don't know that we, I'm not sure we need to put anything in the bundle. Um, Scott, would you think that we want to put something in the bundle? I think it would just, if it disappears. I, 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 no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put anything in there as yeah. like a placeholder or anything. Yeah, or, or in, the, in the docs. That's what I think Justin was saying, put it in the docs. Um, as like a deprecated library section or something. We have the list of libraries now. We could either like... Right. Make a new yeah, I wouldn't do that because it would just it'll get out of date. Yeah. yeah. I think the biggest issue that I come across a lot is when searching libraries for Google, you do come upon those libraries still because they're still hosted on GitHub. Yeah. Uh, right. That's why we want to make it really clear in GitHub that they're at that at the very top of the readme to say, no, don't use this. <laughs> so uh, it sort of does that, but not completely. Yeah. By the yeah. way, there is some there is some bug when Google is indexing the the document, the title of the read read the docs pages all say version 1.0.0. I, I was going to put in there an issue for that. Let's see. Uh, so it sounds like it would be uh, welcomed then to have a PR to the bundle to remove those uh, those three. And I, I would 
second that I think those three are probably fine to remove. It maybe the exception maybe being the phono, or or maybe another way to phrase it is the phono one is perhaps the closest one to being supported. I'm pretty sure there's still hardware for sale. Uh, let me double check so I'm not seeing untruths. It, that think... is true. Okay, but it's very hard to get a SIM that will do the gotcha. SMS. Yeah, because it's like older 2G and 3G and stuff, I think. Right? Yeah. So presumably yeah. at some point there will be a 4G or a 5G type thing of that, but and it'll some be a new library. Use AT and... control, but I really, anybody who uses AT control, I want them to use it by themselves. Yeah. Um, Is it against policy to rename a library with like underscore deprecated? I wouldn't do that. No. Yeah, that would break any links to it or anything like that. So, um, so I can do the work. Open up the, art for the other two, so ESPAT control and WSGI, um, and then, and maybe I'll just start with one of them, and then, you know, I'll add a badge, add some deprecated stuff on the top, open a corresponding one to remove it from the bundle, and then if that one's approved, then I can do that with. Some, any of the other ones that I start finding. And obviously I'll, I'll validate on Discord or whatnot first before I just start doing any of those, but. Yeah, because we haven't, we haven't deprecated the phone and stuff in particular, we haven't deprecated, but very few people try to use. And I think there's only one thing we sell. One or two there is talk sell. about bringing it back, but I assume when they bring, if they bring it back, then it's just going to be like phone of 4G or, or some other name, you know, it's not going to be the, the old archive version anyway. Yes, yes, that is correct. Also, there's a lot of issues about uh, like SMS spam and stuff, so yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I had to wait into those waters a little bit. Yeah. Alright. Um, uh, Alright. Any other Questions or comments, or anybody else want to add anything? All right, I will take the last timestamp and get us wrapped up. So this has been the CircuitPython Weekly Meeting for April 29th, 2024. Thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, again, if you want to support Adafruit and CircuitPython and those of us that work on the project, consider purchasing hardware from the Adafruit shop at adafruit.com. The video of this meeting will be released on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and the podcast will be made available on major podcast services. It will also get featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Uh, visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe to that. The uh, next meeting, uh, I did not actually look at the calendar, but I believe, uh, off my memory at least, is uh, at the usual time next week, so somebody uh, maybe correct me if I'm wrong there, but I think we are on uh, the usual time Mondays. Uh, Monday, rather, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Uh, Pacific, uh, next week as well. The meeting, as always, is in the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at adafru.it slash Discord. If you would like to get notified of any changes to the date or time, uh, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord. And uh, that's it for this week. So thank you to everyone, and we hope to see you all next week.